Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live, an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. Welcome in, Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. As we move along through this week, 4th of July week, uh, we are excited to introduce our guest here in just a minute. We'll do that after a couple of different details here. Just a reminder, if uh, you're in the need of any financing, maybe you're getting ready to purchase a home or refinance, even more importantly, if you need a realtor, financial planner, tax advice, legal advice, at Real Estate Radio Live for seven years now, we have provided people a network of opportunity in terms of experts that we work with. And um, we would recommend if you're really in the need of someone that you trust, in any of these areas in real estate, contact us. Let us know. There's a couple different ways you could do that. Text or call 408-838-9060, or you could always email joe at reradiolive.com. All right, most of you know if you've been following the show for over seven years, our focus is education and information, and we work really hard to provide you, the consumer, with content, great guests, good information, no exception Today, I want to welcome in Ken McElroy. He's the author and also, uh, along with Robert Kiyosaki, most of you know, a real estate advisor he's working with very closely. He'll tell us more about that. They partnered, and they do a lot of work together, investment, real estate, and much, much more. We'll dive in. Welcome in, Ken. Thanks for joining us. Joe, thanks a lot. Great to be on your show. Yeah, I'm excited about this. Looking at this in advance, you know, it was funny. When I, uh, I don't know, you could tell me probably, I read, I remember as we recommended robert's book the very first one he came out with how long ago has that been now when he do you know roughly when he came out with his first book yeah the rich dad poor dad yeah you bet. yeah in fact uh we just got back from new york for the 20th anniversary so uh this is the 20th year wow that that book came out i know it's it's changed a lot of lives it's, it's been an incredible credible book yeah i i would have to say 12 or 15 years ago but 20 years that's amazing well congratulations him the concept was great and he's built on this success story, um, and we can't wait to hear more about it, but more about how you teamed up and what your business is looking like because of this uh, because of this knowledge. Well, let's get started, if you can, Ken, if you could give our listeners kind of a feel for your background, if you will. I, love, I always say that, you know, everybody has a story, and it starts somewhere, and then you end up, <laughs> and you're in the middle somewhere. So give us a little idea of your background and then kind of move us into current day, what your current roles and responsibilities are with what you're doing with real estate today. Sure, happy to. Yeah, so I pro- I started probably like a lot of people. Um, I I did not, you know, I wasn't strategically thinking about being in real estate or real estate investing or anything mm-hmm. like that. I, I uh, My parents did not go to college, and I had an opportunity to go through a wrestling scholarship. So uh, while I was there, I, I, you know, gravitated toward business. And, um, so I, I came out of school with a business degree, but even then I still didn't really know what I wanted to do. And, and a friend of mine who, uh, this was in the Seattle area, he, he said, Hey, why don't you come manage this apartment building in downtown Seattle while, you know, while you're finishing up school. And, you know, of course, free rent, uh, is, uh, you know, an incentive. So, so I did, uh, even though I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, I said, how hard could it be to collect rents? And, you know, well, of course, that was when my real learning started uh, as I started to collect rents and clean units and, and do the maintenance and all the things that were necessary in that property. I actually liked it. Uh, I got my real estate license, and then I went to work for a very large company based out of Seattle. It's now called Pinnacle. And, um, you know, at the time, though, it was just a couple thousand units. Hmm. And um, so I grew up kind of learning, you know, how to manage properties. And so for the first eight or nine years, I was a property manager and uh, the company was growing and, and I was managing properties basically up and down the western seaboard. So, you know, anywhere from Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada. And then I decided at one point that I was just on the wrong side of the desk. I was managing properties for some very, very neat people. And but I, you know, I was, I would take these properties and I would turn them around for them and, 
and they were putting together deals with other guys and buying these buildings. And, you know, I, I hadn't learned that side of it. So I just took the leap um, mm-hmm. about 20 years ago and, you know, started buying properties. And of course, the first one was a, you know, two bedroom, two bath condo. And I used my own money. And then I, I ran out of money <clears throat> after a few days, you know, of, of just trying to look, you know, and, and, um, you know, once once you have two or three properties, you, you know your your savings is gone, <laughs> right. right? So that's when I had to learn how to buy um, bigger properties and to syndicate. So hmm. so that's you know for me it's just been one big learning process. And you know I have a philosophy of a buy and hold strategy as opposed to trying to time the market. Right. And being a property manager, I always wanted things to cash flow because when they cash flow, you know money's you know, you're sending money to the investors and, right. and when you're not, you're calling them for it. And, and, you know, the, uh, the latter is not very fun. So, <laughs> and then, and also I, I just, I know how hard it is to find good real estate. So, so I've always been on a long, long-term hold strategy. And so along the way I joined a, a group called entrepreneurs organization or EO and, and now I'm in YPO, but I, I met a guy that said, hey, I know this guy, Robert Kiyosaki. He just wrote this book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and uh, he'd be a good investor for you. And so we met, and about a year, year maybe a year and a half later, he invested in, in one of our deals. And uh, we just become very good friends since then. And you know, now our company has uh, 10,000 units. Wow. Uh, you know, we, we uh, has a market value of, of uh, right around a billion dollars. And we're in uh, Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, Nevada, and Oregon. And, you know, um, uh, 350 employees. But literally, Joe, it's just, you know, every step, every month was learning something new, you know, from how to hire a CFO and how to hire a president of our company and, you know, how to how to read financials and all of that. I had to learn, even though I had business degrees, you know, but it's, diff- <laughs> it's different, you know. So here I am now, you know, um, with a great organization. Um, you know, I've been focusing on our employees in the last mm-hmm. few years. And so but the personal development piece has been a really, uh, one of my passions and, and, uh, it's, it's turned out to be a good thing. We, we just won, um, you know, we're the, one of the top employers in the state of Arizona, but we also became the, the ninth best, uh, real estate management company in the country. Wow. Uh, we got, we got that award last year. So, um, you know, we're, I'm trying to develop an incredible culture uh, and not just, uh, you know, buy and sell real estate. Well, congratulations. That's quite a story. You know, as I listen to you, Ken, one of the things uh, I was just talking to someone about the last couple of days, which it's good to hear you elaborate on, is what it takes to be successful and grow a company. And, and uh, one of the things that I heard from you is, you know, you started – I mean, right from where people start, you buy your first place, you understand what it's like to be a landlord, you're cleaning floors and you're collecting rent. And what's interesting is to me, I'll just make a quick observation, is that most people these days, I think in general, the conventional wisdom is, you know, God, how could I make money really quick and how could I grow real quick and how could I have this company that's making, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars overnight? It just doesn't happen that way. You know, you that's the story you tell, and the reason I like it too is, and I think people really, I'd love to have this res- resonate with people, is that you start somewhere and you have some success, you build on it, you learn from it. Ken tells a story about bringing in successful people around him. He didn't have an ego. He knew that in order to build and get smarter, he'd surround himself around, you know, more and more of these types of people. And so I appreciate the story, and I'm glad you shared it, kind of took us through that path, because uh, I think it's important for people to understand that, you know, anything starts usually something small, and in order to turn it into something bigger and more successful, um, it takes a lot of hard work, it takes falling down, getting yourself back up, and, and continuing to build, don't you think? I do, Joe. I, I think, you know, it's funny, while I was going to school, uh, I never learned the how powerful teams could be, you know, the school is a very individualized right. process, mm-hmm. you know, obviously, uh, you know, if, if, if I look over to my neighbor during school, uh, you know, during a test, you know, it's called cheating, but in, in, in the real world, it's called collaboration, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, <clears throat> literally I, once I learned, I was really, I thought I had to do everything myself and, you know, everything had to go through me. And once I learned to leverage other people, and utilize their skills. 
Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, the, the whole world <laughs> opened up for me because there's some amazing people out there with some amazing skills. And if you put them in the right, as Jim Collins says, good to great was one right. of my favorite books. Love that book. You, you put them in the right seat, they flourish. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes that's a hard part though, is finding the right person and putting them in the right seat. But once you do, they are, it's like ducks to water. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's really an amazing thing. And, and I learned, you know, you have to give up control. Uh, you have to trust and, and you, you still have to manage the process. But if you're going to get big, you have to, you have to hire an amazing team that can help you get there. Yeah. It's critical. It's really important. And I'm glad you shared that with us because we're going to talk on the other side of the podcast. I want to get more into the book that you guys just had published. I'm excited to talk a little bit more about that and just really elaborate on this. But if, before we take a quick break, if you can, um, Ken, give everybody, um, give them the title of the new book that was just released. And then if you could also share with those listening, you know, where they might get the book and find out more information about you and your team. Yeah, you bet. Well, so the book's called More Important Than Money, and what it is, it's Robert Kiyosaki and all the advisors contributed individual chapters on what they thought was the most important piece other than money. Mm -hmm. So things like what you deal with, Joe, debt, you yeah. know, and we can talk a lot about that. I mean, debt to me is incredibly important, even though it is money. It doesn't have to be. It's not your money. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, taxes, Tom Wheelwright talks about taxes. Yep. Garrett Sutton talks about asset protection. So there's a lot of things in there that are incredible and important for anybody who's trying to build a business or a real estate portfolio. Very good. Where do they uh, where could they find out more information or get the book or find out more about what you're doing? So it's funny. We just released the book. As you know, we were in New York two yep. weeks ago. Uh, we already have 100,000 books sold. On Congratulations. Book. Yeah, Exciting. Thanks. And um, it's uh, it can be on Amazon, uh, you know, or or you can just go direct to the Rich Dad website. You can get it on the Rich Dad Advisor website. So there's a lot of a lot of places. It's it's being distributed right now worldwide, and we're we're in the process of putting it in other languages as well. Very good. All right, we're going to take a quick break. This is Joe Cachero with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. Today we are interviewing Mr. Ken McElroy. He's an author along with Robert Kiyosaki and uh, others on the more important than money it's a book they just released when we come back we're going to talk more about that and much more this is joe kachera we'll be back with you in just a minute for more information on today's program visit reradiolive.com that's reradiolive.com Hi, this is Joe Cachera of Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. We are your go-to resource for all aspects of real estate, including buying, selling, refinancing, building, and legal and tax advice, and much more. You can subscribe to Real Estate Radio Live podcast on iTunes and Stitcher to listen to an engaging discussion about anything and everything real estate. So make sure you get our app, RE Radio Live, in the iTunes store to follow the show. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. Welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. We have a really, really exciting um intriguing interview today with Ken McElroy. He's the author, along with uh, Robert Kiyosaki. They just authored a book that was just released, and the name of the book is More Important Than Money. It's really basically a collaborative effort with the Rich Dad Advisors, and Ken is one of them, and it's quite a success story, and uh, happy to have him on today. So tell, tell us a little bit about, before we jump into the book, and I'm going to dive in, we're going to talk about some exciting details. I know you've you guys have sold um, several hundred thousand already. You'll continue to do more and more, I'm sure, with a book like this and uh, and all this information. There's a there's always an incredible. Uh, it'll probably always be this way. There's an intrigue with real estate. People are interested in real estate. They're interested in investing in real estate. And maybe it's because we we could see it, we could touch it, we could feel it. We you know, unlike stocks and other things, real estate's a very unique 
thing. But before we jump into the details, Ken, again, um, the book, I'm sure they could get it on Amazon or wherever. And then uh, what's the best place? Or I guess just go to Amazon and get it. But I'm probably it's all over the place. And then what if they want to know more information about what you guys do? Sure, yeah. So um, <clears throat> there's a couple places they could go. They could go to rich vet, richdadadvisors.com. Okay. Um, they could also go to my website, which is kenmacelroy.com. All right. Uh, but the the book is being distributed right now, Joe, throughout the country. To you know, it takes a while for a book to right. um, you know get to all the all the individual stores. So you can basically get it at any major store uh, throughout North America. Um, if you want to, uh, you know, what I would suggest is that you just go on and, and order it direct okay. uh, on Amazon or either the richdad.com website. Perfect. All right, let's dive into this exciting details of the book, and we'll we'll give people a glimpse of the wonderful uh, information you guys have, and you have a collaborative team to do it. Boy, it's it's very exciting. So tell us a little bit about uh, why the A team is more important than money, because this book is really what I love about the thoughts of this is it's one thing to be driven by money, and hopefully that'll be the the key result, but all the things behind us. So tell us about why it's important to have the A team. Yeah, well, I talked a little bit about team before, but, yep. you know, Robert's assembled an amazing team, obviously, with Andy Tanner and, and Josh Lannon and Blair Singer and Tom Wheelwright and uh, Garrett Sutton and myself. And each one of us have a different uh, discipline. You know, Garrett is an attorney, so he specializes in asset protection. And, and um, you know, so what happens is a lot of times, you know, especially as, as I told you in the beginning, when you start out, you don't really know what to do. You know, you know you want to buy something. You don't know how to manage it. You don't really know how to finance it. And then if you have to raise money, you don't really know how to do that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Robert's team that he surrounded himself with is just a number of people that can assist him in a number of things uh, in whatever he might be doing. And then, of course, you know, the, the, it's my team, too. So. Right. Right. So one of the one of the incredible uh, advisors is Tom Wheelwright, and Tom talks a lot about taxes. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people look at taxes negatively, and and um, you know I understand that, and, and I used to as well. You know I used to say to people, I work till May for the government, and the rest <laughs> is you know mine. And um, but the thing is, is that with proper planning and proper tax planning, as you know, Joe, you can literally make a uh, millions of dollars a year and not pay any tax legally uh, if you just understand the tax law and you know that through using things like depreciation or component de- depreciation or things like that that you you can you can have massive cash flow and have depreciation wipe it out and and so those are the kinds of things that are in the book you know okay. and and then I talk a lot about debt which is right up your alley you know yeah. And debt in my opinion debt is the the best thing going because you can buy a 1 million or a 10 million dollar property and have somebody else finance, you know, mm-hmm. 70 to 80% of it. Right. Why wouldn't you, you know, at at such low rates? Right. And you're basically using other people's money and that's, you know, that's the way the banking system is set up, you know, millions and millions and millions of people every day go to the bank and put their money in as form of deposits. But the, those deposits are liabilities to the bank. The bank does not necessarily <clears throat> want your money. You know, they have to pay you expense. That's an expense mm-hmm. to them. So they have to lend it out to guys like you or me. And, you know, so a lot of people look at debt as negative because they're in credit card debt or, you know, maybe, you know, uh, other other types of, of debt. And, uh, you know, they bought assets that decline in value. And, and so what we talk about in the book is, is paying attention to the tax loopholes that you can use legally and using debt to buy assets that produce cash flow so that, um, you know, you can live the life that you want. Yeah, let's spend a couple more minutes on debt, divert debt versus good, bad, because uh, you're, you're right, Ken. I, I, you know, not just because I'm in this business, I understand it too. And I, so if you could explain to people a little bit of maybe, it may be common sense to some, but not others that, the whole idea of this appreciating asset, you touched on a little bit, how you could, you know, the difference in an investment, if you take 100000 for instance, I've always said, and you put it in a mutual fund or a savings account, you're, you're making 100000 you're making the money, whatever potential returns you have, it's off that 100000 itself. 
You take a hundred thousand invested in real estate. Let's just call it, you know, a million dollars worth of real estate. Now you have an appreciating asset. So talk, talk a little bit about more. Expand on that. Let, let's stay with that for a couple minutes because I think it's really yeah. important. I think it's an excellent example. You, you know, and, and here's the interesting thing, Joe. The hundred thousand does not have to be your hundred thousand. Good that's, point. You know, that's yep. that's what I learned as yep. well. So, so. <clears throat> They, you know, every good deal starts in the mind. Mm -hmm. And so if you, you know, if you find somebody like yourself who can put, say, 70, 80, even 90 percent debt on a piece of real estate and you can find somebody else to put the remaining balance down, mm -hmm. you've got yourself a deal. And if it cash flows, it's a win win for everybody. Right. And so so when we're when we're talking about good debt versus bad debt, you know, good debt, it's it's in the it's in the. Uh, cash flow board game you know there's good debt and there's bad debt and you know bad debt would be you know credit card debt or buying a new car or buying a boat or something like that and i'm not saying you sh you can't have those things because i have all those things but but i what i do is i use good debt so good debt is buying assets that produce cash flow so for me it's buying a 200 unit apartment building that generates 3 or 400,000 dollars of cash flow a year mm -hmm. So, you know, if I can buy something like that using other people's money in the form of, you know, debt like a like a bank or even uh, my syndicated investors, that everybody's happy. And in the example you used, you know, banks will lend if there's collateral. Mm -hmm. And so the reason they won't lend on stocks or mutual funds is because there isn't any. Yep. With real estate, it's tangible. It's something that they can actually take back if they need to. Right. Plus, they can become your partner. You know, they're they're smart. Those those people that are lending money, they're right alongside you. They want you to succeed. They want to put money on on real estate. That is their business. And so they want they want you to succeed. They want you know, they don't want to, you know, give somebody a loan and then take the real estate back. They want the whole thing to be successful. So there's a lot of learning that can be done as you go out and find real estate and putting debt on and most people, the reason why they think debt is a bad word is because most people are in, you know, they have student loan debt mm -hmm. or they have credit card debt or whatever. And, you know, all they see it is this negative I pay payment every month with a high interest rate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And, the, you know, one of the reasons I know people could find this out in a book and they'll pick it up. And I would recommend, highly recommend that as many people go pick this up. And the reason I like you know, and I haven't read this book, and I will myself. But the reason I like the concept of this book and uh, is that it it really focuses in on all the things you need to do, and quite frankly, a lot of the stuff that people like to, or, or it's easy for them to avoid to become successful and make money. And these guys, what they do, what they do along with Ken and Robert and their group, is really get in the details about each expert, each area, and. Why that's so important, again, like we mentioned earlier, you don't get rich overnight. You have to learn. You have to understand. You have to have some setbacks. You have to know who to go to. So what I'd like to do now for the next couple of minutes, we have just a few minutes left, is what would you say, and I know they could find this out in the book, but obviously to someone that's, that's, gonna, that's listening to this show right now, I always like to say, Ken, and they're just, they don't know where to start. They got a little money. Maybe they have some ideas. They've... They're listening to you. They're getting excited. They're going to pick up the book. Um, there's some great information. What would you say to a person that's just really trying to get started in investing in real estate? Yeah, that's that's actually the greatest question because that's the one that I hear the most. How do I get started? Right. I, I agree with you. People get motivated. They don't know where to turn. Right. I, what I tell everybody to do is first devour as much information as you can. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking about 8 10 12 15 $20 books. Um, that's only going to get you a little bit of knowledge. But then the, what I did, Joe, is I found somebody who was actually doing what I wanted to do. Okay. And I just basically started taking them to coffee. I started meeting them for lunch. I started taking them to dinner. And I just start, you know, you, know, you just need to surround yourself and get yourself into groups of people that are actually doing whatever it is that you want to do. Um, you know, there's, multiple groups on Facebook and LinkedIn and on the internet, um, investment groups and real estate groups. And, you know, whether you want to flip houses or, you know, buy for the long term or buy apartment building or commercial or residential or, you know, retail, 
And so it's just a matter of going online and surrounding yourself with some of those folks. And, and, and then you're going to, like anything else, you want to find yourself some kind of a mentor or a coach, somebody that you trust, and you want to do it with somebody that's actually done it. Got it. You know, not somebody who's talking the talk. So you want to find that person. And I've never, in every single time I've asked, had anybody ever turned me down. What I found, as you have probably found too, that most of these people that are successful are are looking for some, it's it's a give back for them. They right. want to help other people. Right. And um, so. It's really that simple, and it's not, as you pointed out multiple times, it's not an overnight thing. This is a long-term. I've been doing this for 20 years, and uh, every year I learn so much more than I didn't know the prior year, and yeah. just like any, any kind of career. But I it's, agree. it's definitely worth it. Very good. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. We just got a minute or so, but what I'm gonna, what I am going to do, Ken, and uh, I'd love to have you back maybe in a week or so because there's so much here. Um, you know, we didn't get a, quite a chance. I know we got the point across. I think we got the message, and that is you really need to go out and buy this book. The reputation that, uh, you know, that Robert Kiyosaki has, obviously, if you do a little research, you understand him. But the, now the exciting part about this book, ladies and gentlemen, is that they have put together all the key advisors with the, uh, the dad advisors in terms of the details, nuts and bolts, if you will, what you need to do to really have a better idea to build success and build money. So before we duck out again, Ken, I'd love to have you in the next week or so again, where, uh, tell us a little bit about, give us a quick title of the book where they could find it and more information about you and your company. You bet. The book's called more important than money. You can uh, find me at uh, www.mccompanies.com. That's my company or Ken McElroy.com. And you can get that book anywhere, Joe, at any bookstore, and obviously Amazon or directly at the richdad.com website. Very good. Hey, Ken, thanks again. And if, if you'll come back, we'd love to have you back in a week or so to, to elaborate on some more of this because we have a lot more to touch on. Yeah, we can talk all day. No problem, <laughs> Joe. Happy to be on. All right. All the best to you, Ken. You guys are going yeah. to be successful. You always are. All right, we're going to sign off for today. Thanks again for tuning in. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, the podcast series. For more information, you can always go to reradiolive.com. Until next time, take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.